Ooh, this caliper is extremely tight. Hmm, I need to get a good grip on this little tool. Let's see. I mean, it's going in, but wow. It stops. Uh, I do hear, like, uh, I hear a noise like something's rubbing a little bit. Yeah, you can really hear it. it sounds like it is on that side. Good afternoon everyone, welcome to today's installment of Mike's Vehicle Vlogs. I want to thank you for joining me today. Um, so, as this is being filmed, two days ago we replaced the front brakes on the 03 Grand Am GT. And, uh, you know, kind of had my suspicion that the passenger side front caliper uh, was going to be an issue. Uh, and I think it is an issue. So if you watched the last vlog after we did the brake job, we took it out for a shake, literally. And then during the drive, you know, once it was on the road, you know, I started hearing a noise which sounded like it was coming from this front, front passenger side wheel. And uh, there was no noise before we did the brakes, obviously, and I've never had a brake job where there has been some noise afterwards so um, I thought maybe at first it was uh, the piece of hardware that goes into the top of the caliper and you can kind of see it over the top of the pads but then I was thinking about it and I don't know for, for some reason that doesn't seem likely um, so I think it is the caliper and another reason I believe our caliper is an issue is because when I first bought the car, I did think that maybe the calip one of the, you know, one of the brakes was hung up, and when I was trying to spin this wheel off the ground, it didn't want to go anywhere. Uh, it was very tough to try to rotate this wheel off the ground, whereas the other side spun pretty easily. And another thing too is when we were resetting this caliper to put the new pads in it did not want to retract um, all that easily either. I did get it to retract and maybe that is where the you know the problem is maybe getting worse after I reset it and now maybe it's out and it's not wanting to go back in when the, you know you lock the brakes I don't know but uh, I did, didn't really want to do this but we're we're going to replace the caliper today. So let's go ahead and get this wheel off and let's get everything disassembled yet again. Wheels off. So just looking at the brakes, and that's the only time that I drove this car was with you guys on the test drive. It's been sitting here ever since, but we can already kind of see some weird markings on the top of the rotor on the sides. And granted, some of that might be normal, but I'm looking at like up here. So, um, but I didn't drive it anymore because I don't want to cook these brakes. Um, so, yeah. Let's go ahead and get the caliper free from the bracket. And just start this whole process, I guess. <laughs> so again, the actual caliper is held on with these 12 millimeter bolts, other way. <laughs> Top and bottom. We got new, a new bracket too, so I'm just gonna change the whole thing over. May as well. Technically what I should do, now that I think about it, is maybe I should loosen the 
line from the uh, from the caliper first before we actually move it. It is a smaller socket. It is a size I was not expecting. It's an 11. Who would have thought? 11s never get used. At least I've rarely used an 11. Technically I don't have to do this either because I was thinking about replacing the line even though it doesn't look bad. So like I got a line, it's a little rusty up here. I could just leave it on and replace the line. Only because if, you know, this caliper was getting hot and the fluid gets hot. Look at this nice new line. Uh, I guess we'll just do it like that. Okay folks, and I have once again changed my mind. I think I am just gonna leave this line alone. Only because that does make me a little nervous trying to, to break that nut off of there. Um, I could just see that line or something just snapping. And uh, I don't know if that's the original line or not. Lines were replaced on this vehicle before I bought it. I don't know exactly when. That might be an original line. I mean, it doesn't look too bad, but I am a little iffy about trying to crack that loose. So I am once again going to try to do the banjo bolt. I'm assuming it should, there it goes. It's coming loose, okay. So that's probably all I need to do right there. I could probably get the rest of it off once the caliper is off. So let's resume taking the caliper off. Kind of tight the other day. Ooh, yeah, the other one, the other side was nowhere as bad as this. This is actually worse now, actually. It, it wasn't even this bad the first time around. Ooh, I might need two hands to do this. Oh, wow. Yeah, no doubt in my mind this is this is the issue. Alright, so we're getting somewhere now, I think. I'm trying not to destroy any of my new brakes. The clips, if we destroy the clips, no big deal. The new caliper actually comes with some new hardware. She's sitting crooked now. It definitely was not this bad the first time that I did this. Hey, someone finally decided to want to come off. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, that was a lot worse than last time. But anyway, this boot is torn. So there, you know, stuff may have gotten inside over time or who knows? Who knows why she has decided to stick. So looks like the top got more wear than the actual pad itself. But that should be okay. I'm assuming just the dr brief drive that I took around the block and to get my shake not far from here didn't hurt anything else. So it should be fine. Like I said, we probably don't even need to reuse these because the new kit comes with them. Uh, here is the fun part, trying to get the bracket off, which I think we said was a half inch. It was a half inch. So... I had to use the half inch <laughs> ratchet. Oh, I grabbed the wrong one. Hold on. That's I grabbed both the half inch and three eighths. This is the half inch one, which happens to be a, a twelve point. And sometimes twelve point sockets scare me. There we go. And now I need the other one. Because of this, the suspension knuckle, the shock knuckle, we need to use the smaller socket, which is going to give me a hard time because it's so small. Oh, 
Oh, yeah. There we go. And now we're home free. Now, the new caliper did not come with new caliper um, bracket bolts, so I have to reuse these. We did get new uh, slide pins and the bolts for the slide pins for the actual caliper. But we do need to keep these. Which, thank God it's not the other side we gotta do because this bolt on the other side is pretty chewed up. goes all right so goodbye to this and now we can fully disconnect the banjo bolt from the caliper we're gonna lose fluid I did buy fluid and uh, we could probably quickly get our new caliper on now this I do believe is um, I think it's probably a reman it's not a brand new caliper it was 40 bucks at O'Reilly's, not a sponsor. I bought it through our um, our account at, dealer, at the dealership that I work for. We did get a new banjo bolt and two new copper washers, which are also probably crush washers. So we don't want to lose them. So we'll just put those here for now. And uh, People are probably wondering, am I going to bench bleed this? Am I going to, you know, what am I going to do to, to bleed this? Honestly, nothing. I'm going to put it on, let it uh, gravity bleed, because, you know, I'm just going to let it do what it can, and then we're going to bleed it the old-fashioned way with, you know, somebody in the car doing the brake pedal, and we're going to open the bleeder, let the air out. Eventually, it's just going to end up being just a typical brake bleeding uh, job. I probably could use the Coke bottle thing that I did with the Aztec, but um, that might take a while. I don't know. I just don't feel like doing that. So we're going to try the gravity bleed thing, and then I'll have somebody actually help me to bleed the rest of the air out by hitting the brake pedal. So this should be just fine. So I need to disassemble this uh, bracket off of here and get the caliper ready to go so we can hurry up and switch it out all right guys so what we're gonna do now is we got our new bracket I'm going to put the new clips in I take that back we're gonna put the um, the grease in <laughs> and then um, we'll put our new hardware in we'll transfer our our pads over and then we're gonna get this hooked up onto the rotor and then that way what I can do is put the caliper on and then make a quick switch with the line into the new caliper so that way everything's already in there and uh, tight and then that way it shouldn't be that much of a hassle to quickly move the line to the new caliper then we'll crack the bleeder open and uh, we'll let it start bleeding out all right so we got the bracket on we got the lubrication behind the new hardware pads are back on um, you know I'm just kind of skipping through this because you know some of you guys may be thinking oh we just we just watched you do all this you know and technically you did with the added step of us basically replacing a caliper and bleeding the brakes now uh, so now it's time to get our new caliper on I'm pretty sure this has already been recessed so I don't have to do that and uh, I'll get this ready so we'll slap this on Got to get that hardware clip in there first, you know, but it'll go right over top. I'll bolt it in, and we'll go ahead and switch the line over. And these pins, by the way, you know, I took them out. They are nice and greased, so I didn't have to add any grease to these, obviously, because it's new. So there's plenty of grease on those pins, so that is something I didn't have to worry about. All right, and now we're at the part where the new caliper is installed. New piece of hardware. Uh, these are still 12 millimeter bolts. I don't know if I mentioned that already. So the bolt size for the caliper itself stayed the same. We've got our play. So now let's hurry up and make the switch with the line. I might not be able to film this. 
because I'm going to need two hands. I didn't bring the tripod out today. But we're going to remove that bolt. The fluid's probably just going to start pouring. I didn't bring anything for the fluid to go into. But it is what it is. <laughs> Got the new banjo bolt here. So, I already cracked open the bleeder. So, that'll kind of save us a step. Alright, so, here we go. Alright, so we got the line off. It was kind of stuck to it, even after I got the bolt off. So that's what it's going to look like. I got both copper washers off, uh, both sides. So we're ready for that. So all I got to do is put it on, hurry up and get the um, bolt in. And should be it. We didn't lose a whole lot of fluid other than, you know, what was in the caliper. And we'll go from there. Okay, and there we go. So it looks just like the original. You know, it's not kinked up or anything. That's how it was sitting before. We'll just let it sit like this for a while. And then, like I said, I'm going to have somebody else kind of help me get through uh, the bleeding process anyway. So, that's it. So we'll let it sit here for a while. I'm going to take a break. Hey, hey, hey. There we go. So that's good. So the caliper seems to be filling up with the brake fluid. That, that really didn't take that long, actually. I'm kind of surprised. So um, I was going to have my wife help me do the bleeding, but she actually is not feeling well tonight. So my brother's on his way over, and he's going to help me finish this up the rest of the way. So I'll let that just sit here and do this for a little while longer, and we'll go from there. Now because we're just doing the one caliper, we shouldn't have to worry about any of the other wheels. Um, just that particular one there. And when you're bleeding, always make sure that you have fluid on hand because this is going to obviously drop. And you don't want it to drop <laughs> below the min mark because, well, if that master cylinder gets dry or any air in it, then you are going to be doing all of them. And you don't want to do that. No. Just start pumping them. It's already really tight. Alright, so hold it. Alright. Keep holding, don't let up. I'm holding. It hurts. <laughs> and I'll put it all the way to the ground. All right, let up. Let up? Yep. Go ahead and pump them again. Oh, I can't. It's like so stiff. Is it stiff? All right, I can just probably do one more. Hold on. If you can't put... All right. All right, hold it. I'm holding. Okay, I can feel it. And all the way to the ground. All right, do it one more time. This gravity bleed might have worked out pretty well. All right, hold it. Hold it. All the way to the ground. You know what? Do it one more time. Okay. All right. All right, holding. I'm holding. All the way to the ground. I think that's it. Wow. That was a lot better than I thought. So I let off? Yeah, I let off. And it still feels stiff? All right, all right. Start it up and then push it. Tell me how it feels. It'll probably loosen up some, but tell me if it's like spongy or yeah, just start. It up. All right, so that seemed to go pretty well. That was a lot quicker than I thought. So uh, didn't take long to bleed. I I did want to do it just a few times to make sure that all of the air was going to be out of it, and uh, it was, you know, so that seemed to be okay. So this bleeder should be tight. I didn't want to over tighten it, but, you know, just make sure it's, yeah, it's pretty snug. I don't want to break it, you know, that would be bad. 
So what little brake clean I do have, because I forgot to buy it again. Spray that down. Spray that. That's really it. Didn't really get anywhere else. And uh, I don't think I don't think it leaked anywhere outside of the banjo bolt. Took a brief look. I mean, we just sprayed stuff now, but so I got in the car, we started it up, and the pedal felt fine. So hopefully, if we take it out, hopefully we won't hear any more noises. But uh, also, hopefully this uh, will put an end to the sticky brake situation. As a matter of fact, it should. And no, I don't use that to actually torque these. I just do them to get them spun up and snug and you know, we're gonna do the hand torque. The little puny jack did a good job today. Look. It really didn't even come down on the actual jack stand. That's surprising. That came down a little harder than I wanted to. This guy's getting a little creepy this evening. It wasn't supposed to storm or anything, but the way that it's looking out here, it's kind of getting ominous looking. Camera never does the weather stuff justice. All right, so here we are, venturing back out into the world. The same route that I took, well, almost the same route that I took the other day. I don't hear any noise anymore. You guys hear anything? Because I don't. The only thing that I hear is uh, when I step on the brakes real hard, you can kind of hear the new pads just kind of, you know, uh, rubbing a little bit. Nothing out of the ordinary. What is that? Is that a bunny? Don't run out in front of me. Thank you. Seriously, this guy's looking kind of weird. And the sun's coming out again. Oh, how weird. So, yeah, we're on the brakes. I hear nothing. I think we fixed it, guys. And the brakes, they feel good. Brake pressure's still there, so I don't think we're losing any fluid. I let it sit for a while. Um, I let it sit for a while after, you know, and I was cleaning things up, and uh, the brake fluid level didn't really go down at all since you know we uh, were bleeding it matter of fact it, it was at the uh, just barely under the max mark when we did the bleeding I did add some fluid before we bled of course um, but after all the bleeding it was just a hair under max so I topped it off a little bit it's just a hair above max now that's where it sat and that's seems to be okay yeah there's no noise so that caliper for sure was just sticking and rubbing up against that new rotor and it was going to fry those within a matter of drives. So I didn't want to touch it, touch the car until we got a new caliper. Wish I could have replaced that hose and I probably should have, but at the same time guys, I could just see that line snapping off. <laughs> so that's it. She feels good. She lives. She lives to die another day, as Erico would say. Let's go home. She actually feels like she gets up a little better. Without that uh, wheel getting hung up. And I thought it was kind of quick already, but I actually think it might, might have done it some good in that area too. <laughs> I love this car. But more importantly, it stops. 
And also more importantly, it doesn't shake. There's no more vibration. So now the front brakes are in perfect working order. And I'm very happy about that. Uh, and are we gonna do the back brakes? The next time I have an opportunity to look at the back brakes, I'll determine, uh, you know, back brakes technically do not get used as often as front brakes. Uh, they're just kind of there to balance out the weight or the shift in momentum or whatever, you know, when you, when you hit the brakes so the whole car doesn't nosedive. Uh, but nonetheless, they are also important. Uh, they are very useful in reverse. When you go to stop in reverse, those are the brakes that accept the motion in that direction. So they are important there. And obviously the parking brake, which I've never used. Um, so I know the rotors, they look pretty bad. I uh, probably should do the back brakes and maybe in time we will. Uh, but like I said, maybe next time I have the car at work on the lift, I'll take a better look at the pads and determine if, you know, they need to be changed. Um, no noise. Everything still sounds great. And I'm very happy. So guys, we're going to call it a night. And uh, that'll be it for this whole front braking saga. So if you guys did enjoy this vlog, give it a thumbs up comment subscribe check out teespring.com slash stores slash mike's vehicle spotlight for all of your mvs and vlog merchandise and that's all we got for today so i'm gonna head home and i will see you guys next time so thank you so much again for watching take care